I'm here for other children. I'm here because I care. I'm here because children everywhere are suffering and because 40,000 people die each day from hunger. I'm here because those people are mostly children. We have got to understand that the poor are all around us and we're ignoring them. We have got to understand that these deaths are preventable. We have got to understand that people in third world countries think and care and smile and cry just like us. We have got to understand that they are us. We are them. My dream is to stop hunger by the year 2000. My dream is to give the poor a chance. My dream is to save the 40,000 people who die each day. My dream can and will come true if we all look into the future and see the light that shines there. That is Rachel Corey. Uh, that's when she was in fifth grade. Um, three links will be provided in the description below. The first is the vanguard of the Jewish boon within Germany. And yes, I would say that as they continue, they will find themselves as a vanguard because what they're doing with these videos and which are taken from their real protests is making monumental waves. Not in our name. Welcome to Not in Our Name, part one of two. And as we go through all this, um, there will be many things that will be presented here. This um, first clip you saw, as I said before, was Rachel Corey when she was in fifth grade. And um, what it what what I'm going to prevent what I'm going to provide you with now next is uh, um, a compilation of a from a playlist. So uh, actually, yeah, that's right. Make it four links. The first link will be uh, uh, a link to um, the Jewish Boon of Germany. The second will be um, uh, Palestine Education 1 of 2, and then Palestine Education 2 of 2, which I do hope other people go and see that, because that uh, has a lot to do with what the current uh, topic of discussion is. But this, uh, this next comp, this compilation, and like I said, the, the fourth, I, I will give you a fourth link, actually, because it will be a comp, it will be actually the compilation from uh, this presentation. Um, which is, uh, and like I said, the, 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 uh, the link below will be a playlist from Dr. Weisfeld's channel. So I do hope you enjoy, um, uh, this checkpoint, you know, filmed by Dr. Weisfeld as it was happening. Um, uh, the headlines read March 8th, uh, 2018, Jerusalem Al-Quds checkpoint crossing into Palestine. Um. This is um, this is some of the best footage because I th I still think that 2018 was the be had the best footage from Dr. Weisfeld. I would say that anybody who's really paid attention to the channel should. So you know, even after seeing this, I hope that you go to the link in the description and press like on every single all 19 of these uh, videos. Here's the Columbia demonstrations warming up here on Women's Day, March 8th, 2018. Here says international legitimacy resolutions relevant to the Palestinian cause shall be applied. And here's all the media, of course. Here's the banner. Stand this way, stand this way. 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 Stand this way, stand this way.
still stinging even though I have the bad on. Come on, huh? 
نموت نموت وتحيا القدس نموت نموت وتحيا القدس نموت نموت وتحيا القدس نموت نموت وتحيا القدس وش هذه احلى عرس وش هذه احلى عرس بيت المقدس في القلوب بيت المقدس في القلوب دم يسال في الدروب دم يسال في الدروب بيت المقدس في العيون بيت المقدس في العيون ارحل عنا يا صهيون ارحل عنا يا صهيون ارحل عنا يا صهيون انسحاب 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 جيش الموت والارهاب جيش الموت والارهاب جيش الغازي ارحل عنا جيش الغازي ارحل عنا عاش الثامن من اظهر عاش الثامن من اظهر عاش الثامن من من انظار عاش الثامن من اظهر وعاش الثامن من اظهر عاش من اذر يا اسير ويا اصير يا اسير ويا مجروح ويا اسير ويا مجروح يا اسير ويا مجروح ودمك هادر ما بيروح دمك هادر ما بيروح وفلسطين بترد الروح فلسطين بترد الروح ونحييها ونحييها نحييها ونحييها وضربوا طخوا هد مبيوت ضربوا طخوا هد مبيوت يا مرحبا بك 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 يا ترامب ولا تنزيل يا ترامب يا تنزيل يخرب بيتك شو حاقير يخرب بيتك شو حاقير يا ترامب يا تنزيل يا ترامب يا تنزيل يخرب بيتك شو حاقير يخرب بيتك شو حاقير يا تنياهو يا مسعود يا تنياهو يا مسعود للمستوطن عرض تبور للمستوطن عرض تبور للمستوطن عرض تبور يا ترامب يا خنزير يخرب بيتك شو حاقير يخرب بيتك شو حاقير صفقة خيرك ما بتمر صفقة خيرك ما بتمر يا ترامب يا خنزير يا ترامب يا خنزير يخرب بيتك شو حاقير يخرب بيتك شو حاقير صفقة خيرك ما بتمر صفقة ما في حل ما في حل ما في حل إلا خروجك يا مختل ما في حل ما في حل ما في حل ما في حل
Entrance is allowed only public transport buses. Checkpoint is shut down.
Here's some dance. Demonstrators are continuing. Soldiers don't know what to do now. And the sound bomb thrown back. Here comes another.
he's getting ready to throw something. They're going to open up the gate, they're going to advance now. You're not Jews, you're not Jewish, you're just Zionists, you're just soldiers, you're doing nothing for the Jewish people. Checkpoint being closed down. Something coming.
You think you are Jewish? You're a pogromist. Pogromist. Du bist a pogromist. Du bist nicht kajit. You're not Jewish. You're just a Zionist pogromist. Do you understand? Pogromist. You are fascism. That's right. What are you doing? You're feeding fascism. Your family, what is your job? I am killing the Palestinian kids. You are occupation. No occupation. No occupation lasts forever. No occupation lasts forever. You will see. Palestine is Arab country. Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine. You will see. Go read. They brought us you from your countries to kill us. You came to kill Palestinian kids. Palestinian women, go. Tell your children the story is before sleeping. What did you do tonight? I killed a Palestinian woman. I killed a Palestinian kid. Go. It's true. Go. What? Why we are here, Bob? Dad, why we are here? We are occupants. We are occupation the Palestinian territories. This is the MS. That's the truth. The Weiss the Yiddish? Nein. The Weiss Gunish von Yiddish. Because you're not Jewish. Yes. Trained to be a Zionist soldier. That's all you know. Go to university. You are killers. And if you don't find anyone to kill, you will kill yourself. These prison walls imprison them as much as it imprisons the Palestinians. And um, how long time you've been here? A month, but I'm staying for uh, four more months. I come here every year to uh, work in solidarity with the Palestinian Revolution against the occupation and against the Zionist state also. What we need is a federation of peoples, for people to live together, not for one people to step on another people's neck. It's not necessary. And it will be broken. This occupation will be broken. No doubt in my mind about that. And how long time you've been coming here? Since 2003, when I was in the latter camp. Then the occupation was inside the camp all day long. And they've been pushed back, and they will be pushed back further and further. Hello! 
And um, now I'm working with Tanwir in uh, Nablus. Tanwir. Tanwir Palestinian Cultural Enlightenment Forum, the center. And how many people are you working with? We came here with the whole bus from Nablus. Yes, mostly women, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think? Like, now it was a march for women, but it became something to protest against the decision of Trump to. Uh, declare Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Yes, this is a delir, you know, a delirium. You know, this is an insanity. They think that they're setting up a crusader castle in Jerusalem. You know, and they think that they're uh, putting up a new crusade in, in the 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration, 100th anniversary of General Allenby from England, who walked into Jerusalem and said, this is the last crusade, because they thought that they had won. You know, that they will be in permanent occupation of Palestine. No way. Every crusade has been defeated. And this one will be defeated as well. Can I take your name, please? Uh, I'm Dr. Abraham Weisfeld. Ibrahim? Huh? Ibrahim, Abraham, same ben. thing. Ibrahim, what else? Weisfeld. Weisfeld, how do you spell it? W E I Z F E L D. And uh, I'm a doctor of political science. Okay, where? From Canada. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome, right, thank you. Thank you. After a few stones were thrown at the tower, gas uh, grenades were fired and one went into a truck here which is caught on fire. Shield has been broken. They're dosing the, the fire. There is the gas grenade that started the fire. Imagine if that hit a person. Still smoke coming out. coverage here.
through which the gas canister, this one here, came smashing through. Imagine the force, this force smashing into a person. This is Dunya, French journalist, doing our coverage live on Facebook. Look up Dunya. So uh, this next one is uh, a clip from uh, November 4th, uh, 2023. Hundreds of anti-Zionist Jewish rabbis among hundreds of thousands at the National March in Washington, D.C. on November 4th, 2023, in solidarity with Palestine, calling for an end to the Zionist genocide on Gaza and the occupation of all Palestine. Protests include the slogans, No More USA to Israel, Double exclamation point. Lift the siege on Gaza now. Also, double exclamation point. Martin Niemöller was a German 
clergyman, a Protestant, who watched Hitler's rise to power as though he were a member of the audience. In 1944, as a prisoner in the Nazi death camp at Dachau, he wrote the following. In Germany, they came first for the communists. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Catholics. And I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me. And by that time, nobody was left to speak up. It is essential that we speak out. The majority of the Jewish diaspora nation is officially in opposition to the nation state of Israel, which is not based on Judaism or Jewishness. It is based exclusively on Zionism. Because of like things like Operation Paperclip, the fact that the early Zionist settlers were in league with the Nazis, and the fact that the Armenian genocide it took a long time for it to get recognized within the United States. Um, it was actually recognized by Trump. Uh, and we also know that Trump is no friend of anybody. He did his own opportunism there. But uh, the Nakba never ended. The Holocaust never ended. And they both tie into something that has not ended, and that's the Crusades. Which is one of the which is one of the strong points of what Dr. Weisfeld has tried to um, convey. Um, Zionism, Nazism, apartheid, even in South Africa, this is like the powerhouse of white power unfolding. When the first Crusade took place, Jewish and Christian. Uh, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim blood uh, flew, you know, flew through the streets because of the Western Church. The Oriental churches, which had been more accurate in their catechism and you know in their traditions, because they had the actual heritage cave wrote back to the movement in Palestine um, that the Nazarene was um, part of. So. One of the things that we see is that the new crusade is done with the Star of David instead of the Western Cross. But it is for all the world to see this genocide is occurring over Gaza. Dr. Weisfeld recently on November 5th, 2023, um, did a protest in front of the uh, the um, the Jewish cent the Jewish Civic Center um, that he um, had been arrested previously for entering inside. Now we are all opposed to the police, but the funny thing about Dr. Weisfeld and his uh, brilliance is he knows how to use a contradiction within the um, state, and he can fall back on the civil society. What you will see is certain people tell him basically, "Shame on you, these Zionists!" You know, and their faux outrage. And then, you know, you will see also as well, um, some of them in agreement with Dr. Weisfeld. He's not breaking any laws, so that's the funny thing about his strategy, which is quite brilliant. Uh, this clip was taken by Robert, sorry, this, this clip was taken by Robin uh, Edgar um, on November 5th, 2023. Uh, headlines read, SPVM at Dr. Weisfeld protest outside Jewish Community Center Sunday, November 5, 2023. It is uh, Sunday, the uh, 5th of November, 2023. I'm outside the uh, Jewish Community Center in uh, Montreal. And I'm waiting for a, a Jewish activist to uh, show up. He uh, wants to exercise his right to uh, go to the Holocaust Museum, uh, perhaps the public library, 
Uh, he had been arrested on criminal mischief charges for doing nothing more than writing and a free Palestine on a poster that uh, was promoting uh, Israel. Um, so he had a 100 meter perimeter place around the building that he couldn't be in. He, to make a long story short, contested that and he was able to get the conditions reduced to allow him to uh, basically go inside the building. He just could not go inside one of the offices in the building, uh, the office of the organization that uh, brought rather questionable criminal charges against him. So I'm just waiting for him to show up. I just thought I would uh, record a short little video about that. Earlier I was standing on the other side of the street near the entrance. Oh wait, I think I might see him. The flag. So I'm gonna walk over there with the camera running. <clears throat> and we got the police over there. I have to wait for a light to change. And I'm just gonna walk over. And I think that's him by the base of the flag. And uh, I'll go over and have a chat. So maybe I'll put the camera in body cam mode. Just means hanging off my neck on the strap. Again, we're waiting for the light to change. And uh, there we go. Body cam mode, don't need the tripod at the moment. We shall go see who that is, but I do think it is Abraham Weisfeld. Probably getting prepared. Ah, oh, there we go. Little, little white guy. Light across the area. <laughs> so, get to say hello. Uh, oh, and the police are coming around. Okay. Hi, Abraham. <laughs> We're in body cam mode here. Oh, good. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, yeah, they were here uh, a while ago. There's two over there, too. <laughs> okay. I have a detective sergeant, you know, who's uh, promised to protect me. <laughs> so I'm going to show the uh, so. judges. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. The sec I was standing over there, and the security guard came out and told me to leave. <laughs> so I had a little chat with the police, I guess. Yeah. Miss you. <laughs> Hello, which allows me to come to the Jewish Community Center. The condition of release has been removed. Raye. 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 Alors c'était une erreur que j'étais arrêté dernière fois. C'est le juge Rivard qui décide ici que je suis libre pour me présenter ici. Il 
enlevé la condition. Les conditions sont encore là de ne pas se trouver dans un, un local appartenant à eux. Il n'y a aucun enfant qui est réglé, c'est juste qu'ils ont changé de donné. Non, c'est un, 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 c'est un local particulier dans l'édifice. CGA, Fédération CGA, Fédération CGA, comme le Center. Hey, non, non, je veux juste que vous ayez toutes les éléments. Pas. Non, non, je vais vous expliquer. Ici, je vais vous permettre de faire des choses, mais ma permission, elle est très fragile. Elle est très fragile. Étant donné le contexte actuel dans lequel on vit, on n'a pas le temps de tout ça. On va vous laisser faire ce que vous avez à faire, dans votre société démocratique, okay? mais vous ne rentrez pas à l'intérieur, vous faites votre manifestation ici, on va tolérer. Dès qu'il y a un affront à ça, peu importe la façon, vous allez, vous allez être arrêté. Maintenant, est-ce que je voulez-vous que je garde une copie de ça? Ici, c'est écrit Campus Communitaire Juif de Montréal. Oui, oui Fédération CGA. Ah, Mais c'est ça, ça, en dedans. C'est ah, dans oui. un bureau en dedans. C'est pas au-dessus de la partie. Local appartement ou étant occupé par le CGA. Étant occupé par le CGA. Occupé par des membres du CGA et voilà, il ne sont pas le seul par le CGA. C'est le local qui est occupé par le CGA. Mais monsieur, ne rentrez pas, pas, pas ici. Je ne vais pas m'assister avec vous, c'est terminé. J'ai bien de lire, j'ai pris le temps de lire avec vous. Je vais rester poli avec vous. Je vais rester cordial avec vous. Vous allez pouvoir faire ce que vous voulez ici, il n'y aura aucun problème. Ok, okay je vais demander au sergent de détective. Ben, vous n'avez pas besoin de demander au sergent de détective, c'est moi le responsable aujourd'hui. Juste pour être témoin, bien sûr, vous allez voir là, les alignements ont été modifiés. Donc la bande là, deux fois en quatre pas, se trouver. Vous allez bien communiquer le temps de communiquer avec le monde. Je pense que c'est clair. Oui, il faudra vous faire réaliser. Oui, monsieur. Donc, je pense que les gars vont se passer dans la condition. Ah, oh, c'est ça. Alors, je vais faire ici. Je vais faire ici. Je vais faire ici. Oh, je vais faire ici. Merci de l'arrestation parce que je rentre pour pas l'user dans le poste. Qu'est-ce que je dois faire? Ok, ok, je vais... Je... Ouais. 
Ok, je ne vais pas entrer, à, je vais pas entrer aujourd'hui, mais je reste ici sur le domaine public à, à l'extérieur. Oui, d'accord, ok, merci bien. Au revoir. Donc, je dis que vous ne pouvez pas rentrer? Mais il ne sait pas. <rire> ils, ils disent qu'il hein, doit consulter un avocat pour se voir en Parce que ça, c'est le nouveau plan. Ce pas le truc à Baptiste. Non, je ne touche pas à Baptiste aujourd'hui. Je fais ma manifestation ici à l'extérieur avec moi. C'est mon affaire. Fait que c'est clair que si vous mettez le pied à l'intérieur, ça va être convenu. Ça serait plate là, de se rendre là aujourd'hui, il fait beau. <rire> je pense que vous avez d'autres choses à faire aujourd'hui. J'ai déjà expliqué qu ce que je vais faire. Vous avez ok, là. voilà. Not in our name. Ça veut dire que Israël ne fait pas le génocide au nom du peuple juif. C'est faux. C'est un menteur. Et ça, c'est yiddish. Ma langue à moi. Une langue yiddish. Ça ne pas un fanatique. Ça veut dire. Je ne pas un fanatique! Ok, I'm free. Sort of. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're free if you can't go in the building. <laughs> well, well, as long as I'm out here, I'm free. Yeah. Okay, now let's see what the reaction is from people. Yeah. Uh, here's a person. Here's a person. Oh, no, the people of Jewish genocide on Gaza. better than going in actually. Yeah, I just double checked everything before going in, you know. I think you probably are within your rights, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. <laughs> because they intend to arrest me if I don't. No, I heard, oh, I got that. They, they don't were... care about any nuance. Yeah, so. yeah, no, I got that. I understood no, they that. They don't yeah, care yeah. that it's, you know, an office. You know, no, they told you had better things to do with yourself today. I heard that. You got better things to do. I know, I think you're doing okay here. I wonder how many people were at the demonstration to, uh, yesterday. I don't know. I I've actually haven't been to any of them because I've always either not been informed My or, or been busy with other stuff. He, I spoke to him this morning from the Palestine Cultural Center, mm. and he says that there were. He said fifty thousand, but I think he meant meant fifteen thousand. Right, right. Because the Arab uh, dialect, you know, they always, you know, like not in our name. That's all there is to it. Oh, that's the security guard, yeah. <laughs> so, the security guard... Uh... Let's see, I'll get closer to the front door. Yeah, I don't know. Not in our name. I will give you one little tip. It's best to circulate back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to, but it's better. <clears throat> I wonder how many people understand the Yiddish. Zanish kind fanatic. You know who told me that? My mother. Right, that's interesting. Yeah. I can almost understand it. I took German in uh, CJ. It's pretty close, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's very German. similar, yeah, 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 yeah. After all the war movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> not in our name. No way. Um, oh, you do have to be careful about what their property is. I'd stay on the sidewalk. Um, they might claim that you're on their property. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah I, I believe so, but but I was I was over there, and the security guard. No problem. Yeah, yeah. better be safe than sorry. <laughs> it's, uh... Oh, people coming. So this is a, a open door day, you know, for uh, 
for the uh, Holocaust Museum. You right. need a ticket to get in there. Today. Right, right, and I was right. even told by the director that I could come in. Right. But he didn't know my name, so right. maybe, you know, that makes a difference. <laughs> But you, you know, I, my understanding of the conditions was you were allowed to go in the building and go to the library, go to the museum. It was just one particular office. Yeah. But uh, I guess I'll have to double check that. No way. <clears throat> There's support. The Jewish community has turned against Israel. Yeah. Some have. Yeah. So. Some now. Yeah. Then there was the occupation of the Capitol building by 500, you know, independent Jewish voices people mm. saying not in our name. Mm. This is the first time that it was used. I, I mm. invented it, mm. this slogan, which became, you know, very popular. Mm. <clears throat> and now they occupied the uh, uh, Union Station in, in New York. Right. Grand Central Station, that's what it's called. Right, right, they occupied right. Occupied that as well. Right. Not in our name. Mm. Okay. It's nice to have all this police protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, what three cars and uh, half a dozen off. Oh, another another one. Let's see one, two, three. So, oh oh oh! It's the uh, the riot squad. <laughs> the riot squad have arrived. <laughs> the group and the boss are here. kinder. <laughs> The kinder werden teut jetzt. Find die Bombe für Israel. Ja. Das darf nicht losen. Das ist eine Sache von unserer Nummer. Auf der Nummer von den jüdischen Menschen. Von den jüdischen Volk. Das ist eine Schemme. Die Jüdischen sind nicht von der was, was. Das ist der einzige Mensch, der was in Lenken sein in Feier. Das ist sein. Thank you so much. Not in our name. No way. Well, I have to say, uh, I'm impressed. You, you got the group intervention here. <laughs> yeah, they seem very interested there in um, looking at the. Sign. I know these guys, that they know me. Yeah. <laughs> Group intervention. <laughs> so we got the riot squad out for a one-man protest. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> no more children to be killed. Everyone's children, our children, they were killed by tank fire and Apache helicopter Hellfire missile that shot the hostages. It's Israel that shot them. My, my cousin was murdered, her leg was cut off and her heart was cut off. By what? And you support them. You, by the Arab, did you support them. You support a second holocaust. Massacre of kids. Shame on you. And you don't even want to listen. I think you're right. Uh, I think they might be here to protect you as much as anything else. <laughs> 10,000 dead now. 4,000 children. Uh, before anybody tries to fuck around and say shit that's not, you know, true because you got anti-Semites that always like to discredit Dr. Weisfeld, he is not pro-police. This is actually what you're seeing here is that he, um, he knows the law and he's, he's really good at legalisms and I warned people about this. He has found a contradiction within this, you know, the civil order. This, the state, the state, so the state runs the courts, but theoretically, the, the, the courts could be the one part that you could break away from the state because it's not naturally state. It's naturally de democratic. So um, when it contradicts itself, you can use this to your advantage. 
And Dr. Weisfeld is dealing with the contradiction of the law the best way he can, by showing the contradiction. So now the police have to protect him in this situation because he is not violating any rules, he's doing a peaceful protest. And more of us should say this, not in our name. Which is also why here at the Bundist Movement channel, this this is the, this channel is called the Bundist Movement, so that's a vanguard term, as Dr. Weisfeld would put it, but I would also say it's the name of the press, the Bundist Movement, because, and I'm not talking about the Jewish Bundist diaspora movement, that, that, that uh, um, sadly met a demise. Nor am I referring to the broader Bundist movement or of, of Jew, uh, known, uh, for the fully known as Bundist movement, Jewish liberation, or anti, an anti-Zionist organization, which I barely knew most any of those people. Uh, this currently, this this current thing, like the Bundist movement, is really currently now just me and Dr. Weisfeld. Um, and it is a sort of vanguard situation of old guard, new guard. But I'm 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 new old guard in a lot of ways. I'm getting too old, um, but. It, it, this is this project of which we bring with with what happened with the martyrs and stuff like that which is on the manuals one and two um, is going to be important there's also um, some other things that will come out from different Buddhists and people will be able to read this stuff one thing that I will make a clear cut statement on is this next thing you're going to see this is its own chapter the Bund, the Jewish Bund in Germany and it is recognized as part of the Jewish socialist Bund um, right on and they are letting you know not on our name and I hope that this part one of not in your name has been very um, informative for you it's not over yet Deutsche PolitikerInnen haben in den letzten Wochen immer wieder ihre bedingungslose Solidarität mit Israel ausgesprochen. Vizekanzler Robert Habeck sagte in seiner Rede, dass Jüdinnen und Juden mit Israel nun endlich, Zitat, einen, ihren Platz hätten und wiederholte, dass die deutsche Regierung aufgrund des Holocausts eine historische Verantwortung hätte, jüdisches Leben zu schützen. Wir stehen hier als Jüdinnen und Juden, die sich dazu entschieden haben, in Deutschland zu leben. Nicht wenige von uns haben Israel verlassen, um in Berlin zu leben. Wir sind hier. Sicher oder geschützt fühlen wir uns jedoch nicht. Nicht heute, nicht vor zwei Wochen und auch nicht vorher. Was uns bedroht, sind Rechtspopulisten und Nazis, von denen immer mehr im Bundestag und in den Landtagen sitzen. Was uns bedroht, ist die Verwicklung von Verfassungsschutz, Polizei und Bundeswehr in rechtsextreme Netzwerke. Was uns bedroht, sind RechtsnationalistInnen, die egal wann, egal wo und egal unter welchem Motto demonstrieren dürfen und dabei auch noch von der Polizei geschützt werden. Was uns bedroht, ist der alltägliche und strukturelle Rassismus deutscher Behörden, Kultur Institutionen und PolitikerInnen des gesamten politischen Spektrums. Was uns bedroht, ist, dass ihr euch versucht, weiß zu machen, dass der gegenwärtige Antisemitismus nach Deutschland importiert wurde, als ob er nicht fest in der Mitte der deutschen Gesellschaft verankert wäre. Was uns bedroht, ist die Aushöhlung eines Antisemitismusbegriffs, der uns als Jüdinnen und Juden sowie andere rassifizierte Menschen, die für Gerechtigkeit einstehen, immer häufiger zu TäterInnen macht. Was uns bedroht, ist, dass ihr uns zwischen eure historische Verantwortung und einen laufenden Genozid stellt. Einen Genozid, der angekündigt wurde und nun vor unser aller Augen stattfindet. Ein Genozid, den ihr nicht benennt, nicht verurteilt, nicht stoppt, sondern im Gegenteil sogar unterstützt. Wir stehen hier, um euch ein für alle Mal zu sagen, ihr schützt uns nicht. Ihr schützt uns nicht, indem ihr das Leid, das unseren Familien von Deutschland angetan wurde, benutzt, um Kriegsverbrechen zu rechtfertigen. Er schützt uns nicht, indem er unsere Angst und unseren Schmerz instrumentalisiert, um rassistische Hetz zu betreiben. Er stützt uns nicht, indem ihr Israel moralisch und material dabei unterstützt, Gaza und seinen Menschen zu vernichten. Ihr schützt uns nicht, indem ihr der Trauer und der Wut unserer palästinensischen FreundInnen mit brutaler, rassistischer Repression begegnet. Ihr schützt uns nicht, indem ihr uns und alle anderen die Kritik an Israel äußern, das Recht auf Meinungsfreiheit nehmt. Ihr schützt uns nicht, indem ihr ganze Bevölkerungsgruppe und Stadtteile unter Generalverdacht stellt. 
Ihr schützt uns nicht, indem ihr unser Wohl mit dem von Israel gleichsetzt. Ihr schützt uns nicht, indem ihr unsere angeblichen Sicherheit immer wieder gegen die Rechte anderer marginalisierter Gruppen ausspielt. Ihr schützt uns nicht, indem ihr die Vergangenheit durch vorgesetztes Unrecht bewältigt. Ihr schützt uns nicht und wir brauchen euren Schutz auch nicht. Eure Schutzversprechen sind ein politisches Instrument. Aber wir lassen uns unsere Geschichte und unsere Erfahrungen nicht instrumentalisieren. Wir widersetzen uns eurem exotisierenden philosemitischen Paternalismus. Wir stehen weiterhin Seite an Seite mit all jenen, die sich gegen jeden Faschismus positionieren. Gemeinsam werden wir weiterhin gegen jegliche Form von Unterdrückung kämpfen, von der Spree bis nach Gaza. The uh, Jewish Bund in Germany is very strong, and all solidarity to them. Um, the more they do, the more vanguard material they get, because the way this is going to work is we're going to pass Bundism to younger people, because it's coming to younger people. There's nothing twisted about that. What's twisted is that Zionists get to indoctrinate our children. No, we, we can speak for... We, we, we will show our children our way out, especially because the biggest difference is among the queer community, Zionists don't actually protect queers, but the Bund does. And the Jewish queer community and Jewish trans community, I don't think I have to go into how far and how large that actually is. So I'm going to bring you to the here and now that uh, Dr. Weisfeld did with um, Ahmed of Palestine. Um, uh, Steve Struggle will show up at, at the very end, I believe. Headline reads, and by the way, this is from October 21st, 2023. The headline reads, The actual nature of Palestinian revolution against the Zionist white supremacist state implanted in the Orient by the Occidental powers seeking to colonize the strategic sites in the Orient. Hey, Ahmed. Hi. 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 So uh, now this is what we've expected for a long time. There has to be a revolutionary upsurge. Uh, there's no choice but to revolt. It's much like the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, in fact. Absolutely. Where it comes from. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is a ghetto uh, uprising. It's a, a revolution. It's in making for the past uh, 75 years, more so. 55 years, more and more so for 17 years, mm. okay? So uh, these are, um, people say no to oppression, no to uh, slow death, mm. no, no for uh, apartheid, no for the ghetto. Mm. So what happened on October 7th was a revolution, a revolution against the oppressors who took their land and put them in a ghetto. And they put them, as they say, the Zionists, put them on diet, meaningless, meaning they have, they will, they collected, uh, calculated how many are in the Gaza Strip, and they give them enough food to survive, not to flourish. This is worse. This is worse than the apartheid ghettos. It's, it's very similar to the Second World War. Uh, the Jewish ghettos and the Jewish concentration camps. Yes, this is worse than uh, apartheid in South Africa. Yeah, because it's, it's a, they yeah, think right. they can get away with it because, you know, the Palestinians are a smaller percentage of the population. That's all they calculate, you know, the power of their military might, and that's it. They're capable of doing yeah. it. They're capable of, you know, expelling or uh, annihilating the Palestinians. And then the, yes. they talk like this too. They say that they're willing to do so. You know, they yes. talk about it in another Nakba. They use the yeah. word itself. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's uh, the, the, we, we are dealing, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with a narcissistic, psychopathic cult called Zionism. <laughs> okay. yeah. It is the very narcissistic. You listen to their leadership, their mm. military leaders. They always talk as the whole world owes them and they owe the world nothing. Mm. The whole world has to ab abide with international law and humanity laws, them 
They don't have to because they're entitled. <laughs> they're entitled because they stole the memory of the six million Jews mm -hmm. and they appropriated to themselves mm. in order to come to again to the world mm. and say, oh, we are the only ones who could hold the memory of the six million who perished in the Nazi camps. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we could do whatever we want, including mm -hmm. genocide. Exactly. That's I put out a poster, you know, saying one Holocaust does not justify another. It's it is. Obvious, you know, like, but they're in a, they have this collective psychosis, you know, amongst them, you know, like once, it is. once they decide, you know, like that they have to say something in order to justify their cause, the security of their state, then they say, okay, it's okay to lie, you know, but as long as everybody, you know, lies and, and nobody denies it, you know, then it becomes, you know, reality. No, it's the person they lie, denies lie. it. Oh, yeah. They lie actually worse than Goebbels. Goebbels, at least he knew what he's doing. He know that he's a liar. Mm. These guys they didn't know they're liars. Mm. They're, as I said, narcissistic, psychopathic cult. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. I was watching Russia Today the other day, having interview with Ehud Olmert, who's supposed to be, quote unquote, a bit on the left side of the Zionist. Mm. And another merits leadership leader who used to be a leader, he's retired. Also, a, a philosophy uh, a philosophy teacher at Bar Ilan University. Both of them, they talk, you know, about peace and uh, you know the need for the IDF to go and uh, finish the job in Gaza, etc., etc. And when the the interviewer asks him what they think about the fabrication of decapitating 40 babies and rape and murder of all and this. You know what their answer? Their answer was, if you think we will uh, entertain this lie against us, this interview is over. Could you believe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, whenever they're masters in the Knesset or the the government say something mm. everybody everybody mm. okay left or right well of course there's no, no left there anyways left or right they will toe the line and they believe in it they were they, those two guys willing to abrogate the interview if the interviewer repeated that the 40 cap decapitated babies mm. was false Mm -hmm. This is how sick we're dealing with. Even in the we United saw. Nations Security Council, they refer to it in an oblique manner, you know, as if it was a valid, you know, like uh, event yeah. that took place. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and the stuff, you know, like even interviews, you know, with Israeli women living in the settlements and the kibbutzim around there. Yes. The squatters camps, you yes. know, like they say, oh, well, you know, like the guy was, you know, nice, you know, like he treated me well, you know, he just asked yeah. me for a banana, you know, probably there was no bananas in Gaza, you know. <laughs> But they wanted hostages, you know, and they treated the hostages well. And they There's no hostages. I don't hostage. call them hostages. I call them prisoners. They're prisoners, prisoners of that's war. That's right. Yeah, prisoners of war. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, those, all of... those cities around, you know, Gaza that were, uh, you know, retaken there, they are part of the original Gaza as outlined in the partition plan. All the territory, Gaza was twice as big as it is now, according to the yes. partition plan. Yes, yes. And those, those kids who went into... The colonies, I call them colonies. I don't like to call them settlement because settlement right. give them a bit. Uh, colonies, okay, are the, these kids actually their parents and grandparents came from those areas. They actually went to their own homeland, their, oh, their actual oh. villages. Wow. Okay. Yes. It's, it's, it's so historical it's, irony. Yes, it is ironic, very ironic. Uh. Then the entire West, media and an establishment they parroting the zionist propaganda as if the history started on october 7th it did not start before that yeah that's so, so sickening to see the western in, in, in uh, enterprise i call it enterprise being so fascistic it and beyond that even uh, ahmed one group you know that i am a uh, you know, uh, email list on, you know, with, a, you know, 600 Trotskyists, you know, from North America, you know, the old age people. <laughs> I got censored on it. I can't post on this list anymore. Unreal. 
Unreal. Incredible, you know, because uh, also because of my position, you know, on Donbass, you know, and defending Donbass, you know. And, you know, I thought about, you know, the similarities between the two, you know, because Ukraine, you know, is bombarding the Donbass, you know, not as intensely as Israel is bombarding the Gaza, but, you know, it's still the same action. Up till uh, four or five days ago, the amount of missiles that rained on Gaza, equivalent of a quarter of a nuclear bomb. Ooh. Now we're uh, today, I wouldn't be surprised to be the equivalent of half a nuclear bomb on a very small area. Yeah. You know, the, the Gaza Strip 365, uh, three, six, 365 square kilometers, while the actual built up area for population is less than 100 square uh, kilometers, where about 2.3 million Palestinians are cramped there. So there's no place for them for safety. They can't find safety. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, a, it's a sheer terror to live for 14 days being bombed from skies and land and sea on those people nonstop. It's unreal. It's uh, There's no parallel to this. Uh, even Dresden uh, attacks by the Allies, it used to take one day, then goes for a week without fighting. Oh. And the Dresden people used to know what to run. But the Palestinians have no place to run to. Uh -huh. Everywhere, I that at the uh, Rafa crossing to Egypt, that yes. the uh, trucks have not been allowed to pass yet. Yes, I know. The Secretary General, did they pass yet? Uh, they were talking about uh, earlier that it will be within the next five hours, but I haven't before. That's getting, right. It if, keeps on getting delayed. Even, you know, uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations went down there, you know, to to, it, beg, to, to beg Israel to open it up, you know. <laughs> It will, if it, this, this atrocity, this genocide, okay, yeah. this, it uh, will backfire on the Zionist enterprise. It will backfire on the West. It will backfire on humanity. This is totally never heard of mm. seeing genocide life, mm. seeing genocide life, mm. while the people of the world are doing nothing, mm -hmm. while seeing women and children bombed in mm. hospitals schools mm -hmm. in in mosques in uh, in in, uh, in uh, churches churches yeah <laughs> yes in open fields on the road on the move they did not the zionists did not spare a spot they could kill and they did not they always kill bomb yeah. whenever they All, can they will kill yeah yes so this is this is brings me to the conclusion which we all know that brown people's life non-white european Oriental, doesn't matter oriental it's, peoples. Yeah. it's expandable it's yeah. expandable it's called collateral damage while the white people life and european israeli lives matters mm -hmm. while the 4100 palestinian life so far mostly are innocent women and children all all people don't matter mm -hmm. it's just just a number mm. and we could move them they are sheep we could move them from one space to another space mm. Mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's it's unreal it's oh. totally unreal I, i'm actually i've been living here for 40 years i'm very very much flabbergasted mm. how the reaction of the west and its media toward the slaughter of my people is it's, it's so sickening i'm sickened to my stomach mm -hmm. But now yeah. there's international protests. There's developing like an international revolution against all the uh, countries, you know, that refuse to uh, support Palestine. The United States, you know, is the one, you know, that voted against the resolution calling for a ceasefire. You we believe that? All alone, believe by itself, the same day that the uh, Jewish Voice for Peace occupied the Capitol building with the Could 300, yeah. 500, yeah. Yeah, what, what are we doing? Uh, what the Palestinians are up against, and not uh, up against, uh, uh, occultic, uh, uh, narcissistic, uh, psychopath maniacs. Yeah. We are against, against, up against the entire West, the collective West, mm -hmm. led by United States. Mm -hmm. These are the people who are killing my people. Mm -hmm. They are, what happened to Zionists are the spearhead of this murdering mission. But without the full support of the West, including our government in Canada, that would not take place. So the, the entire responsibility 
100% squarely lies on the West, mainly United States, Canada, Britain, France, Italy, Germany, Sweden. They all bear the ultimate responsibility after the Zionist uh, henchmen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, France yeah. is trying to outlaw the demonstrations like we've had, you know, in Ottawa, Toronto. Yeah, yeah, Montreal. yeah. You know, all yeah. in France would be illegal. It would be attacked by the police. It's incredible. And in it England, is. you know, they're making the holding of a Palestine flag to be illegal. Yes, that but fail. The, the people Same thing are... Like in, uh, in the Zionists, you know, what the uh, mini empire there, you know, they ban, you know, the uh, Palestine flag. It was banned a long time ago, but then they had to give up. And yeah, no, no, after, now they're after to do the Oslo Accord, now. The, after the Oslo Accord, they allow it. Okay, because they recognize the PLO. Yes. But now they are going haywire. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's this kid of, of a, a piece of cloth. This is how right. they are. Yeah. Okay. They are just, just a bunch of cowards. They've been murdering women and children and old people, murdering uh, land, murdering everything in their, uh, in their way. Yeah. To, uh, to terrorize the people. That's what they're doing. They're on the revenge spree. That's what they are. They're on revenge spree. Hmm. And yeah, nobody's holding the match. They're, they're, they're very upset psychologically, you know, because their bubble has burst. You know? Absolutely. What happened on the psychological 7th? framework, you know, they're thinking of superiority. It's a white supremacist, you know, mentality that they have. It is. Led by it the is. Ashkenazim, you know, even yeah. over the uh, Mizrahim and Svaradim, you know. It's a totally caste system, you know, of social. Yeah, order. but, you know. Even in, within any class, you know, within the working class, even within the bourgeoisie, you know, like it's all, you know, such a corrupted society, you know, in the social sense. That it Absolutely. cannot, uh, Absolutely. cannot, uh, you know, be, be, it cannot be coherent, cannot last. The only thing that's keeping it together is, you know, American armaments. Yes, definitely. What we have in in uh, in the Zionist state, I don't like, you know, I don't call it Israel. Uh, that's too much of of uh, respect. Yeah. The Zionist entity has it's a it's a European colony. It's a it's a crusade colony. Colony. This time is not white uh, Christians, this time is white Jews mm. who accepted the job to do the job as a crusaders in the Middle East. Yeah. So the, the so-called Arab Jews are the Mizrahim who joined this mm -hmm. uh, as a enterprise. Uh, they have a problem. They have to look, they have to measure up to the white master who came from Europe and they become they have also, besides being Zionists, they have the complex of, of the color. They have dark brown color, but they have to act and behave like a white man. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of them are becoming a white man, like what I call them the Oreo mentality. Black from outside, white from the inside. It's like Barack Obama, for example, or uh, Lloyd Austin, the, Israel, the American uh, defense minister. They're all... Oreos. I, uh, this is the Oreos uh, mentality. Oh, yeah. So what we have, what we have in our hands, Israel, is is a, a white colonial crusade uh, state in the middle of the Arab East, and this place is it has no place in the in the in the middle of the in the middle of the Middle East, and it's it's only time for it, it to be dismantled either by force or by peace i hope peacefully i don't i don't like bloodshed but well the peace means revolution that's the only way you know to get peace yes absolutely absolutely it has the internal that... revolution within israel itself one mm -hmm. there's the palestinians two there's this Mizrahim if they wake up you know and and three i don't know, know. there's uh you know uh, the whole west bank as well you know like they stretch you know they, they can get stretched thin you know like i think they're holding off on actually invading into the gaza because they know that if they did they would have another front you know with hezbollah in the north you know uh and then that, that would, you one, know the west bank you know would like, you rise up you know at the same time that one thing another thing which it's really i think it uh, weighs heavily on the generals the israeli generals uh, mind is they know their soldiers they know they're a bunch of cowards they know they're just TikTok, TikTok boys. They're not boys. motivated like they used to, you know. They're not, not anymore. These are not the so-called pioneers. 
yeah. who fought the 1948 war, 56 war, 70, 67, even 73. After that, that's it. No more. We having the, the, the new era of TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all these things. Uh, these guys, they have other uh, interests besides fighting. They don't want to fight. Yeah, they want to go uh, lie on the beach in Tel Aviv with his oh, girlfriend. That's what boyfriend. happened to the rave, you know, party there. That was all soldiers. Yes, right next to the They're military base. I saw a video of one woman, you know, with her military pants on, dancing, you know, with a bra top, black, with long black hair, beautiful, tall woman, and in the background is, you know, the parachute is coming in from yeah. Palestine, you know, to attack the military base. And they were there. You see, you know, they they this had is very no important. idea what is, you know, the real situation. They had no idea, you know, what Gaza is. You know, they thought yes. Gaza is just, you know, a prison, you know, that they're prison guards or something. You know, what is their mentality? You know, like, and, you know, they want to have fun. Okay, fine. So it's smashed on ecstasy and that's it. You know, that's all. Uh, there's one thing I want to bring to attention. Many people, they don't know. They think Israel or Israel, the Israelis entity, it's like Canada or United States or France or Italy, where people, they go to, they don't go to army. Israel, actually, it's an army has a state. Okay. Israel is an army, has a state, which is, means that everybody in Israel is a soldier. Either he is an active soldier or a reservist. Yeah. When you finish your, uh, your compulsory uh, service, you put on a list for the rest of your life. Okay, according to your ability to be to be a reservist. So those in the rave party who are the average age of 20 years old, they are either active soldiers or just finished the reserve, reserve and they are sitting being as reserve soldiers. Uh -huh. Okay, so attacking those or targeting those are, they are soldiers. Yeah. Okay, I, I am not making any uh, apology to what the people done on October 7th because this is uh, an outcome not the reason what happened on October 7th hmm. that's not the issue the issue no, no, the no, liberation no. of Gaza exactly you cannot put 2.3 million people put them on a diet put a, a, a barbed wire around them hmm. and tell them you cannot leave you cannot get in Without our permission, yeah. if you ha if you have a complicated problem, medical problem, you cannot leave until we let you go. Sometimes people die before going to let's say to the other uh, abroad hospitals, what just are, because other hospitals. You know, like there's no hospitals to begin with. The hospitals are finished. No electricity. They have been bombing them. They bombing All of them, them are bombed. 25 are damaged you know, by bombs already. And then there's and they are running two big out ones that were destroyed, you know. So by the bunker. They are running out bombs, of uh, you know, by... medical supplies. There's no yeah. medical supplies. Yeah. They actually, I was listening the other day, actually yesterday, to uh, a couple of surgeons. He said, first, we're doing surgeries without anesthetic. There's no anesthetic. No. Oh. Gone, gone. It's run out about four days ago. Uh -huh. So they're doing all these uh, surgeries yeah. without anesthetic. Okay, that's number one. Number two, he said, because of the dwindling uh, medical supplies, okay, we have to, we are forced between to choose between which is more, uh, should a lot, should live and should die. Which is more likely okay? to live and more likely not to. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So plus, yeah. plus, even after doing some surgeries, People die, are dying now because there's no antibiotics. Because after operations, oh. you need antibiotics. Yeah. Many people are dying because of huge bacterial infections. There's no antibiotics. And the Zionists are not allowing these life-saving. This is why I was so concerned about the Rafa crossing there, you know, like, yeah. you know, like it, if, if Israel doesn't allow the, you know, the delivery of goods, you know, then there's no choice. E Egypt has to attack Israel. Has to, you know, break I don't know, break open I don't know the about border, Egypt. you know. The, already, yeah. Egypt, I hear Egypt and Jordan are pledged, you know, to attack from their borders if, you know, the Israel launches a land invasion of the uh, of the Gaza and forces an expulsion of the Palestinians. 
Or well, I think I think what happened. This is what happened. I think if if the Israelis decide to go into uh, Gaza by land invasion, which I doubt they would do, that, Hezbollah will enter enter the fray. I mean, full full force. Yeah. Okay. That, that will be eventually a regional war. Yeah. We're bringing in Syria and the Iraqis and maybe then the Egyptian and the Jordanian into the fray. I don't think the Americans know the ramification of this situation. Mm. They are supporting and encouraging Israel to do. Mm-hmm. So is the, the rest of the West. Yeah. And either way, Israel is going to lose. It's going to lose. It's lost. It's lost its image. It's lost its so-called deterrence, it lost 75 years of, of empire of terror mm-hmm. that it's capable of inflicting terror on people and people has to abide, mm-hmm. abide to its terrorism. Yeah, it's a terrorist state. It is. Yeah. It is. What they're doing is terrorism. It's a pure terrorism. Yeah. It's, this is, I mean, this is textbook case of terrorism. What she is doing uh, on Gaza Strip for past two weeks yeah and they express themselves you know explicitly oh, you know, yeah. Racist oh, yeah. Terrorists. yeah yeah, yeah. This, uh, i'm gonna show you... this again oh what does it say on the top here i forget now i can oh, hear i can see well... for a just peace yeah oh, okay good that was the name of the conference uh, that we started the opposition 2000 2001 excellent oh it was yes it, it was pitiful Actually, you know, yeah. there was, um, okay, t- about 200 of us, you know, from North America and a few from Brazil. Yes. All Jewish, you know, like activists, you know, wanted to find a movement together. We all sort of realized that at the same time, it's, it's you know, it takes a Jewish revolution to stop the Zionists. And this is what I'm it doing is. at the uh, Jewish Community Center. You know, I'm not going to let them ban me from the Jewish Community Center. I've already won one judge's decision, you know, provisional decision until the October the 30th. October 30th, I hope, you know, to have the whole condition lifted entirely. And then I'm going to go back there. And I'm going to go back, you know, with a survivor friend, you know, who's part of the, uh, you know, J- Jewish Community Center, you know, survivors group there. You know, I think the survivor very good. very interested in I agree hearing with what you. I have to say, you know, because I'm a second generation survivor myself. Yiddish speaking and everything, you know, like, you know, they can't ignore me. You know, I'm not going to let them, you know. Very good. No, don't don't There's listen. So much to do, you know, internally in the Jewish people because they've been so, you know, like blindfolded by the Zionists here who control everything. You know, the one newspaper Very true. calls itself Zionist. You know, <laughs> the one Jewish newspaper in the whole country. <laughs> you know, I, well, you know what? I believe I strongly believe that uh, Jewish voices against Zionism, whether Jewish for vo- for peace, uh, Jewish voices. GPLO, Jewish Liberation Organization, all these anti-Zionist uh, Jewish groups, including also to that uh, Satmar and uh, uh, Naturi Karta. Karta. Yeah. Yeah, all of them. These are real, authentic Jews who can delegitimize the Zionist movement from representing the Jews as they are, they, they, they claim to be. Hmm. They have nothing to do with Jews. These are are are, are European fascist uh, movement. Yeah, they are, they are they are no less or uh, better than the Nazis and the uh, fascists yeah. of Mussolini and the par- apartheid in South Africa hmm. and the old South in the United States and uh, the earlier story uh, history of Canada with the indigenous people. Yeah. There's no difference. It's the same same uh, mantra, same methodology, same mindset. We are the people, we are the humans, and the rest are not. Yeah, yeah, they say that explicitly now. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, they're very, very uh, outspoken about how uh, tough they are, and uh, uh, they called my people are uh, human animals. Mm. Like uh, Yoav Gallant, the Israeli defense minister, he said we're dealing yeah, with defense human... minister. <laughs> yeah, we're dealing. Yeah, we're dealing with uh, human animals, and many other like uh, Likud uh, members on the Knesset says uh, there's no civilians in Gaza. They're all terrorists. Like mm. I heard it many times. They say it in English. They say it in Arabic. They say it in in Hebrew. Even the so, Labour president Herzog. It's it reminds us back to the Nazi era when they blame the Jews for everything. 
Yeah. And there's no good Jews. They said all Jews are bad. Yeah. So it's the same mentality. It's, it's coming a, back. It's like a genetic criteria. It's a racist, racialist uh, criteria. Exactly. So what are we doing? Draw is, a line in the world between the Orient and the Occident. Exactly. And they think that, you know, the Occident, which is, you know, the, the junior, you know, like civilization in human history, the juniors think that they're superior, you know, to the ancient civilizations, you know, at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So well, what do we have in our hand? We have actually... Uh, 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 another another Nazi state. It's in its own uh, different uh, aspects, but uh, and the crust in the uh, nutshell, they're Nazis. The the, uh, Nazis. the term Nazi, you know, is uh, a, a, a appropriate because I think they are aspiring Nazis. If they could exterminate all the Palestinians, they oh would. yeah. Oh okay. yeah, yeah and they to them. did so, you know. Yeah. So yeah. If they could, they would, you know. But you know, there's a limitation on them. The limitations on them are imposed one by the United States, which is no limitation, <laughs> <laughs> and the the other well, limitation, um, you know. Well, the United States doesn't want them to embarrass, you know, the United States, but they want to let them get away with as much as possible before before yeah. you know they. They have to rein them in. It's like a dog on a leash, you know, like a rabbit yes, dog. Yes, okay. exactly. Like, like yesterday, I, I like I, I heard, like, well, not I heard, I heard it in the CBC radio, CBC radio, hmm. that 30, 30 members of parliament, mainly from the Liberal Caucus, NDP, and the Green Party, send a letter to the prime minister to ask him to press for ceasefire. That's it, to ceasefire. Just you know what they, what, Yeah, do you know what his answer was? It, two words. Israel has the right to defend itself. That's it. Oh, okay. That's, He's taking the American line. He's taking the American... No, no, he, he should, actually, from the first day, he was more Zionist than the Biden. Like yeah. I heard him in that uh, orgy they had, they organized an orgy, a speaking, a speaker's orgy in, in Ottawa on Sunday. Uh -huh. I remember that the following day. And he and uh, all those so called leaders in Canada, it was an orgy. And you could hear him. He's actually, you know, that he's a drama teacher, right? Trudeau? Uh, Trudeau. Yeah. Oh. He was a drama teacher, right? Oh, he, he's yeah. an actor like Zelensky. <laughs> yes. You know what he did? You know what he did? You should go back to the, the his speech. He acted as he is in shock and he is, is holding back here. Uh, and he had his voice cracked. Pierre cracked. Morgan did the same thing, you know? And then he was yes. accused of, you know, promoting, you know, false news. And he said, no, I never did. I never did. And so they showed, you know, like the original, you know, like this guy. Yeah, but this guy, really this crying, guy is a prime you know, minister. Nothing. Yeah, this same guy thing. is the prime minister. Yeah, we're not talking about an, an actor, a, a clown oh, yeah. on TV. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about uh, he cracked his voice, sound like he's holding back tears, oh, and he God. was so determined. You should you should look at it. It's very very clear. The guy was putting all his skills as yeah. a drama teacher. A drama teacher is not a, a comical teacher. A drama teacher uh -huh. put all his skills into that moment. Yeah. And it's so disgusting. It's so yeah. sick to see yeah. this guy doing. That. Well, he's you know like he's he's a he's he's something's you know really wrong with this guy because he you know like he was hosting a Nazi in the House of Commons. <laughs> yeah, could you believe it? Could you believe uh -huh. it? Uh, then one one of his guys took uh, the fall for him. You know the the speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, oh, it's me. It's me. I take it. Yeah, I don't know. Watch it. This guy will be something big in the future. Some kind of position within the Liberal Party. Or some kind of organization. No, because he was just, you know, like doing what he knew everybody was thinking. You know, he knew that. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, you cannot invite somebody to the parliament without the CSIS and RCMP oh, yeah. make a, a profile, a, a back for, a background profile on them. Yes. Before, it, because, but they thought it will pass. Okay. But oh. the media, uh, but they were exposing Steve it. Steve is coming on. Them. But, oh, okay. oh, hi. Great. Okay, but uh, we only have a couple of minutes left here. Let him speak then. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, let's just take a, a minute uh, uh, so each, you know, to conclude, and then we'll start another, uh, we'll start another video after this, another 40 minutes, okay? Sure. Sounds good. Okay, good. Okay, so...
So, uh, okay, Ahmed, in conclusion, you know, for this, you know, audio. Well, in conclusion, I would say shame on the West, shame on Canada, shame on the United States for uh, slaughtering my people. We will triumph. We will overcome. And Israel will eventually get its uh, spot in the historical garbage bin next to Nazis and the apartheid regime. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I, I agree. You know, that's what's going to happen. You know, this cannot uh, endure. And uh, the uh, Jewish people are not going to let it endure, you know, alongside the Palestinian people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what is your impression of the current uh, uh, revolt of the Palestinians and, this, and the occupation and the siege of uh, Gaza, Steve? I think that the Palestinians have resisted in a manner that is among the most heroic in world history. Uh, I think the Israelis have lowered themselves to a status lower than that of the devil. I think that what they are doing has shown who they are. We can make a mistake, but this is not a mistake. This is a pattern of behavior we have seen for decades by the Zionist butchers against the Palestinian people in general and toward people who, who are called Arabs in, in particular. It's just disgusting. There's yes. nothing short of you. Nothing short of nothing short of sitting. Israel is nothing short of sitting on the right hand of Satan. Hmm. Yeah, well, they they wouldn't care if they were. They wouldn't Not, care. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll get together again. You know, uh, in the surgent uh, condition that we're facing. Yep. Yeah. This has been not in our name part one. And to finish this um, a presentation from an AJ Plus video will be provided uh, for your study. Uh, this one uh, came out on AJ Plus on April 7th, 2019. Anti Semitism is back. Woo! Trumpism has energized the racist, Jew hating underbelly of American society. And yet, paradoxically, the Trump administration has also been the most pro Israel government since Harry Truman. I'm Matt Triple Parentheses Lieb, and I'm going to explain how we are now somehow living in a world where people can love Israel and hate Jews at the exact same time. If you've been paying attention to the American political landscape for the last two years, you've probably noticed it's been a bit Hitlery. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Trump repeatedly deflected when asked to disavow former KKK leader David Duke. Last week, headstones were toppled at a Jewish cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri. Police are investigating a slew of bomb threats targeting Jewish community centers all across the country today. Jews will not replace us! You know, I'm proud to have that German blood. There's no question about it. Great stuff. Jesus. That clip would actually be less disturbing if he ended it by drinking a cup of German blood. You'd think someone who ran a campaign so rife with anti-Semitism and supported by Nazis and the KKK would be heavily criticized by the Prime Minister of the Jewish state. I mean, surely Benjamin Netanyahu will have some strong words for Donald Trump. There is no greater supporter of the Jewish people and the Jewish state than President Donald Trump. Damn, he... what? Also, you might remember after the Charlottesville march, Trump famously said there are some very fine Nazi-adjacent marchers. Well, surely that caused the Prime Minister of Israel to condemn Trump. I mean, it had to. Netanyahu has been notably quiet. Oh, giving Trump the old silent treatment. Uh, I see you. Netanyahu's silence actually speaks volumes, especially when you consider that in 2015, he literally made a plea directly to American Jews to speak out against Obama's Iran deal. The days when the Jewish people could not or would not speak up for themselves, those days are over. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, so you're only a friend to American Jews when you want something, but as soon as the Nazis show up, you just ghost on us. Man, Netanyahu is a classic boy. But how can someone be both pro-Jewish state and anti-Jewish person? 
How can a president's two biggest fans be the heads of Israel and the KKK? For the last few decades in America, right-wing pundits, politicians, and Christian leadership have changed the conversation around what constitutes anti-Semitism and shifted the definition from bashing Jews to bashing Israel. Anti-Israeli and anti-Semitic protests. Anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic cesspool. Today, anti-Semitism hides behind the label of anti-Israel. The new anti-Semitism. Yep. This ain't my bubby's anti-Semitism. You know, the one that displaced my bubby and killed her bubby and her bubby's bubby and enslaved her great grand bubby. No, this is the new anti-Semitism. The one that boycotts my bubby's third favorite brand of hummus. Now, this is not to say that criticism of Israel can't be anti-Semitic. It absolutely can be. Calling someone a Zionist as a code word for Jew or just generally conflating Jews and Israel as if they are interchangeable is anti-Semitic because it implies that all Jews are secretly loyal to Israel, which makes no sense because 66% of Jews do not live in Israel and 25% of Israelis are not Jewish. But the weird thing about conflating Jew and Israel is that it's actually constantly being perpetuated by American conservatives, evangelical Christians, and Israelis politicians, usually in the same sentence. The lifelong friend of Israel and the Jewish people. Pro-Israel, pro-Jewish. The Jewish people and the Jewish state. Israel and to the Jewish people. State of Israel or the Jewish people themselves. Israel and, and the Jewish people specifically. They keep saying Israel and the Jewish people as if they're one and the same. Uh, is the word, are you looking for Israeli? Is that the word you're looking for? Because... So why are conservatives constantly conflating the Jewish people and Israel? Well, there's two reasons. Reason number one, by making support of Israel synonymous with support of Jews, they're also making opposition to Israel look like opposition to Jews. And reason number two, if any of your right-wing buddies lets a little bit of the old anti-Semitism slip, like how Steve Bannon reportedly said he didn't want his daughters to go to school with Jews, well, being pro-Israel is a convenient cover. Are you giving him cover by For anti-Semitism? Like yeah. There's no reason whatsoever to believe that Steve Bannon is anything but a friend of the state of Israel. No one's talking about Israel, my dude. All right? In no other instance would that line of reasoning be acceptable. Well, well, of course Steve Bannon doesn't hate Mexicans. He has stated unequivocally that he quiero's Taco Bell. And that's just it. Being pro-Israel and getting Israel's endorsement in return gives a ton of leeway for these anti-Semites to do their whole not liking Jews thing. But it still begs the question, why would someone who hates Jews support Israel? Well, there's lots of reasons. Let's start with Steve Bannon. I'm proud to be a Christian Zionist. That's why I'm proud to be a partner to one of the greatest nations on earth and the foundation of the Judeo-Christian West. Ooh, he really hit a hard J on Judeo, didn't he? You see, Bannon sees Israel as a natural ally in his racist war between Islam and the Judeo-Christian West, which is code for white European society. It's not that Bannon loves the Jews, it's just that he doesn't hate us as much as he hates the Muslims. He is so sweet. You know, like the way antifreeze is sweet. Also, evangelical Christians, they're some of the biggest supporters of Israel in the United States, but not because they love Jews. They support Israel because of a prophecy that says all Jews must return to Israel in order for Christ to return and commence the end times. Israel has been reborn as a country. Jews are returning back to the Holy Land after centuries of exile. That's exciting. And those are end times prophecies. If you're a believer in, in Jesus, you will go up you, you, the, the um, rapture. The Jewish people, it's still a mystery how God's going to work all that. Ooh, it seems like the fate of the Jews is within the mystery box. Let's see what's in it. Two thirds of them are going to die. That one third that's left at the end is going to finally come to the end of themselves. It's not going to be through a process of education. It's going to be a, through a process of a horrible holocaust. Tie, 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 tie. So basically, Christian Zionism is a plot to get all Jews together in Israel so that it triggers a Jewish genocide. And the smattering of Jews left after that will get to choose between Christianity or hell. It's a f***ing long con. Christian Zionists are like the Kaiser Soze of allies. Even some white nationalists like Richard Spencer have shown perverse admiration for Israel. You could say that I am a white Zionist in the sense that I, I care about my people. I want us to have a secure homeland. You realize how 
fucking insane this is, right? What you have here is a actual Nazi using the state of Israel, which was created in the wake of Nazi atrocities, as a model for a white ethno state. Even though it's kind of funny that Richard Spencer is so fragile that he thinks that seeing a black good guy in Star Wars is white oppression, it's still disturbing that a Jew hater can look at Israel and think, I like what you've done with the place. And that brings us finally to Donald Trump, who is a much simpler racist. You know, like the way a dog is racist. He likes Israel because he likes walls and fascism. You know, in Israel, they profile. They've done a, an unbelievable job. They see somebody that's suspicious, they will profile. Walls work. Just ask Israel. Oh. My. G dash D. The right has been trying to coax American Jews into the conservative fold for decades, spreading the fear of a new anti-Semitism infecting the hearts of the left, all the while claiming that conservatives and Christians are the Jews' only real friends. They're gaslighting us. Oh, don't worry about the Nazis marching in the street or sitting in the White House. The real Nazis are boycotting hummus. It shouldn't be all that surprising that the racist, ethno-nationalist, evangelical supporters of Israel who hate everyone that's not exactly like them also hate the Jews. Racist gonna racist, but it's not that crazy. But the fact that the Israeli government can only find their staunchest support among the racist fringes of the radical far right speaks volumes about the direction that Netanyahu is leading the state of Israel. And you know what? I want no part of it. Hey everyone, it would be so rad if you jumped into the comments section to join the discussion about the Jew-Israel anti-Semitism disconnect. And it'd be even more rad if you didn't jump into the comments and be anti-Semitic. Thank you so much for watching everyone. My name is Matt Lieb. Follow me on Twitter and please don't, you know, send me a private message calling me a kike.